Self-Publishing Podcast, episode number 21. Welcome to the Self-Publishing Podcast, where if you want something done right, you've got to do it yourself. And now, here are your hosts, the three whitest guys at podcasting, Johnny, Sean, and Dave. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Self-Publishing Podcast, the podcast that's all about how to get your words out into the world without contending with agents, publishers, or any of the other publishers, or any of the other gatekeepers in traditional media. I'm Johnny B. Truant, and I'm here with David Wright and Sean Platt, sometimes known as the Sexy Dynamic Duo, <laughs> and uh, we're here today. And in other what areas. world is that? <laughs> I don't know. It's some sort of a parallel universe. Perfect for a bunch of fiction writers. <clears throat> let's write the fiction. Let's let's write a story called Sean and Dave become the dynamic duo. Sexy duo. <laughs> you non-YouTube listeners just... are really missing out on Dave who looks like a million bucks today. <laughs> He's got a little bit of a grooming action going on. <laughs> It looks like hey, he slept 3.25 hours. <laughs> Screw you. <laughs> hey, can oh, I... I always um, like that. <laughs> can, can, I, can I praise us? So, Please. So, <laughs> I was uh, listening Dave to, the, call. <laughs> to the past podcasts. And um, it's, this, is, this should be a humor podcast. <laughs> there, there have been epic new levels... Of just of of hilarity, and especially this is a little off topic, but hey, you know why why stop now? Um, I went back and listened to the first episode of Better Off Undead with a Birdemic review episode, <laughs> and it is just epic levels of amazing. If you haven't gone to Better Off Undead show slash one and listened to our review of the horror masterpiece Birdemic, do you know if in iTunes you can have two categories? Because it really should be in two categories: it'd be in horror and comedy. I think we should just change to comedy and then never be funny. <laughs> be completely <laughs> serious. <laughs> completely serious about horror at all times. We should always fail to deliver exactly what we <laughs> Spectacular. <clears throat> like, that can be our mission statement. Well, so what do you think? Is it not on what we promised? Okay, good, let's do that. <laughs> oh, and hey, you guys, just in the last episode, or maybe it was two episodes ago, I uh, was eating lunch, and, and you guys complained that I didn't have any bananas, so I brought a <laughs> banana today. <laughs> awesome. And I'm going to be eating it seductively over here. Wow, that's, that's spectacular. I, see, I was stupid. Wow. I finished my banana like an hour ago. <laughs> Fuck you. <So> <laughs> <laughs> what are you, 10? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hey, do you remember a while ago when we had that call in that the caller's name was was Frank and he wanted to know why the hell we bothered doing this podcast? He didn't put it in those terms, but he basically <laughs> yeah. was like, why do you guys yes. do this podcast? Yes, I totally remember that. So I just like to announce that I this is like the second time I've said something like I just like to announce. The second or third <laughs> time. I would like to decree You um, need one of those like director things from the thirties where they speak through the thing. <laughs> See, you non-visual, like, YouTube non-listeners just missed my, my hand motions. It really it looked like he was doing something with a banana. With a banana, let's just say that. <laughs> Is, uh, the other day, on Friday, I was telling Sean this, we talked before, I, was, uh, I found myself with some extra time and decided to start a new novella. And that... <laughs> <laughs> the, the extra that, time thing funny. is extra What's funny. That? No, this is awesome. This is so awesome. Well, I can't, I can't, I don't really want to tell you what it is because I don't want to blow it yet, but... Oh, you um, fucker. <laughs> I, well, I, I, I will, but it's novel enough that I don't, I don't want to blow the concept yet. But it's, okay. um, just it's suffice really to say that awesome, it's... awesome, though. I'm, I'm in love with his idea. I, I have to say, I was actually contemplating that idea before you emailed and said, I'm calling, I'm claiming this. <laughs> like, <laughs> that fucker. Well, since it yeah, was a toss-up, one of us had to claim it. No, it would have made a great Dark Crossing. <laughs> oh, th throw me a bone here. You guys have 500,000 you know, things coming out every no, week. No, you I finally, can't have it. I finally get one idea I can actually do, and you guys are like, oh, I wanted to do this. No, I, 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 love, I, I love it. You're naming I love, the character after me, aren't you? I, I, I won't lie, Dave. I am taking some inspiration from you. <laughs> What a you shock. know how I mentioned 
You know how I mentioned in an earlier thing that one of my cheats is to name characters after real people? No, I'll just stop there. No, actually, the lead character's name is Reginald, not Dave. So I'm trying to do the Dark Tower thing where I make uncool names cool. That's awesome. But, but what? Anybody, wait, you know, like Roland? Roland. Are you saying my name isn't cool? No, because no, I'm not Reginald. actually using Dave. Oh. Which actually I'm realizing now sounds just like Roland. So maybe I'm just deliberately... His name is Yvonne. But the, the point of all of this is that I had extra time and I, I took like four extra hours of writing. I'm just so... This is in praise of the podcast. This is why, for me, this is why we do this. Because it keeps me in, in... I'm talking to writers and I'm getting ideas about writing and I listen to the podcast and I say, oh, I'd like to do that. And I... Tell me it's more about awesome. the free time thing that you were talking about. We're, we're like sister... What's her face? Teresa? Sister Fister? <laughs> Mother Teresa. Oh, my God. <laughs> Johnny, that's filthy. <laughs> all right. But that... But just between... There go all the YouTube viewers. <laughs> I did it well. I did it yeah, while wearing my likes. headphones. I did it while wearing headphones, which... which which was something that came out of our discussions. I did it off of a discussion that sort of came out of, like off of an idea that came out of something we were talking about. I did it because I'm making more time for writing. I mean, this just keeps me in this mentality, and you guys doing this every week, I'm like, well, hell, that's, like I believe that it's, po I, I'm just saying it's awesome, and I hope that the people who listen to this feel the same way that we do. It's like a think tank without the bubbles. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's it it that's that's exactly why I do it. I, I love the I love the thinking out loud and um it's like learning in real time and every week is different. Like Dave and I had um a rather long conversation yesterday where we were talking about just the difference in a year because we we've never had one week, although I think we will, but we've never had one week where everything was just like bam, like every, like we just home run delivered like life is never going to be the same but every single week 100 percent of the weeks in between now and when we first started doing this in january is we've moved further like decisively we had we added more to our catalog we added more fans <clears throat> and that's just it's the momentum is just wonderful because you can really feel that and it gives you it gives your writing purpose it no it means that when you sit down to the keyboard you're doing something permanent and that really matters to me. It really affects like how I approach the page. And that's another thing too, is the fact that you say, well, it's only been a year. It's only been a year. Like that's ridiculous. I mean, you guys yeah. are essentially, this is essentially your full-time job and yeah. it's only been a year. Yeah. And I, I've had a lot of success in, in the stuff that I've done, but not in publishing. I am not a successful published fiction writer really yet. I mean, I've done it. But it's not like my thing, and I want it to be. So it's nice. You guys are giving me a role model. Yeah, it's it's really cool. And, and you got to think too. All the money that's coming in from yesterday's gone, and all the Inkwell titles. I mean, that's split between two people. So it's it's at this point supporting. I mean, granted, two people made it happen. So it's it. I don't know. Actually, that's that's a really good question. Is I thought you were going to say, well, actually, no, that's not true. About two people <laughs> make it happen. No, when you about, said when you said actually, I was like, oh no, he's going to diss Dave. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Dave I, does I'm wondering. Nothing. I, I think that that's a pretty interesting um, question. Actually, is would we have because there's two there's two of us, and I think that our two actually equals a lot more than two. Because, hey, stop making fat jokes, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. Back up from the camera. Then. <laughs> so you know. <laughs> non-youtube viewers they blacked out um yeah literally so, like yeah. he didn't turn off his camera he blacked out <laughs> um yeah i don't remember anymore oh oh just you know <laughs> the, the our 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 creative chemistry really fills in a lot of blanks you know it's not just that we're able to write together but it's how compatible our skills are and i don't know i i, I think that i think we're fortunate but even without one another, I'm sure we would have been able to make a living at this. And that's, that's the bottom line. You know, anybody, it's not easy. It's not easy at all. And if, you know, I mean, we really dived into, did you guys at all after last week's um, 
scammer one want to like immediately do another one on the same topic? Because I totally did. Like I thought of all these things after that episode that I wanted to say that didn't. But anyway, well, I I will say that that we debated over what today's topic was going to be, and I remember thinking we need to do two hours of this podcast. So <laughs> it's sort of in the same vein. Yeah, like I just like we don't like, have enough I, time. I don't, and I, I thought of so much stuff. Like I. But 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 then it was it was kind of like I'm maybe actually, if we got to the point quicker we'd have more time. No, I'm actually that's probably the problem. Well, that is probably at least a chunk of it. Let's be honest. <laughs> but I I think I'd rather hear that one over again um, more than most of the other ones that we've we've recorded because I'm really curious like what we really talked about because I wonder if we covered more than I'm thinking or or less. I don't know. But the bottom line is if somebody's selling you an easy answer out there, it's a scammy product because. Publishing isn't easy and it shouldn't be easy. You're creating, even if you're creating marketing art, you're still creating art. And, you know, it's, it's, it is, it is what it is, but it isn't easy. And, yeah. um, and I just launched a continuity program where the, 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 the punchline is that it's going to take you a long time and be really fucking hard. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> like you know what? Never. Dude, okay, you'll love this. You'll, you'll love this, Johnny. So, um, you know, the, the, the mastermind that, um, that that Dave thinks is like fucking Auschwitz <laughs> and isn't it's not but, Auschwitz it's it's the meeting of the SS generals yes 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 there we go quite Thank the you. opposite <laughs> so um uh but they were they were talking and I, I always thought this was really fascinating where they were talking about offers that pulled right and what kind of offers really did uh, a better job and they were finding that like in the um in the fitness industry I don't, Johnny, you probably know it's X something. It's some workout program. It's P90X. Like, yes. Okay. That one, that one was outranking everything else by like a huge, huge margin. And it was funny because this was, this was a couple years ago. This was, I think 2010. And so it's, you know, the, the recession is just like the, the economy sucks. Just everything's nobody expects. Not like anything. now. Well, no, but this is, it was, it was a little worse two years ago. So yeah. They, 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 at the time, it was interesting because five years before, the kinds of offers that pulled on TV, especially for fitness, were, it's easy. You know, you want to lose weight? It's easy. Drink these pills. Take this shake. <laughs> it melts right off. And those kind of offers were just killing it. But it's like it shows you kind of the mindset of the country where a few years later, those offers aren't pulling at all because people think, like not having to work hard for what you have is bullshit. So the, the offer that was pulling the best was, this is going to make you feel like you're fucking Satan. Right? And it's just like talking about how hard it is, how it's the worst thing ever. You're going to vomit when it's over. And people, Sign were, me up. people were buying it because they know like that, like it was just really direct marketing. It's saying that hard work equals results. And you know, when the economy's in the tank, people believe that message. They believe a different message when everything <clears> else is all sparkles and fairies. So, so now all these scammers are going to start saying everything is hard instead of everything is easy. So now we won't be able to distinguish the uh, scammers from the real people. Well, so let's just, let's just go ahead and say that, that I anybody. released my, my How to Be Legendary manifesto before Dave made that comment just now. <laughs> let's just go ahead. <laughs> yeah, but he's such a cynical fuck. He, he, he probably predicted did. this comment two no, weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, <laughs> we actually scripted this whole part out. We're, we're, we've got notes in front of us. You probably do, you bastards. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyhow. Um, oh, I almost accidentally just said the name of Johnny's book. That would not have been good. <laughs> It, it's not that huge of a deal, but I'd rather not yet. I want to build into this is me building anticipation. Uh, Somebody else might next week to write the before name you. of my book. Well, I think it's a really good title, and I don't want anyone to beat me to it. No, the title is. I the think book. I'm going to write it. <laughs> yeah. Me against Johnny. And I, and I know you can beat me to it, so please don't. You know what would be funny is if you actually both wrote that book with the same title. And wrote it your own way, like totally different stories, because you would approach the story totally different and just release them both. See what the <laughs> fuck happens. That would be that awesome. would be funny. Except that I'm afraid Dave would win, so I don't want to do that. <laughs> I have a bit of experience in the the field. So yes. to speak. <laughs> yes. So I would just again ask you, multi-selling authors, to have pity on the poor guy with one actual book. 
Yeah, no, I, I, I love this. I hope, I hope you kill it with it. Okay, so do we, we have a, we have a. If you need a cover model, I'll, I'll offer my services. <laughs> there you go. All right, so yeah, we do have several questions. Let me. I have two that were that came in uh, on the line, and I have one that was written in. So Stacy asks, um, and for, before she asks, this is really, really relevant to the question. So I have to, I have to read this first because it's really relevant. This was definitely the funniest episode yet. <laughs> I was listening with headphones and laughing so much my husband checked to see if I was okay. Uh, that's not really relevant, but it does praise us, which means it's it relevant. highly relevant. She says she liked the puppy bacon incident and the last. Oh, uh, puppy bacon! Was, dude, I took that joke to dinner. My kids thought it was hilarious. <laughs> okay, so here's the actual question: When you are editing a book, in you know, with the door open, not sending it out for editing. So this is just you personally. Do you continue with your daily writing goal with a new book, or do you focus on editing only? I'm trying to find the right balance. I'm not sure if my focus is spread too thin by editing one while writing another at the same time. Yet at the same time, I want to get my books out there. Um, so I feel like if I'm not writing for another book each day that I'm wasting that day, even though I'm busy editing, what's your take? Now, I will say before you answer this, that working with you guys... So Okay, so... Julian Smith has this concept. His blog is in overyourhead.net. And he says you should seek out people that make you feel like shit, and that's how you advance. <laughs> and these two idiots do that to me. And it, it's annoying because I'm like, no matter how fast I feel, I'm like, wow, I'm writing more than ever. I wrote 7,000 words on Friday, and I never do that. And I'm doing two things at once. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, but they released three last week or whatever. <laughs> so you can't, you, you know, don't let the pace that this podcast portrays totally dictate whether or not you're doing it right. I mean, remember, we got a guy here who works at a glacial pace compared to these two, and that would be me. So, yeah, and, um, and you, anyways, you also so got to know that? this is, well, this is our full-time job, too. So I don't think, I, I think being a writer is hard, and, and most people, you know, they're not doing it full-time, or they're, they're either doing it part-time, or a lot of their writing time is taken up with freelancing and things. But, you know, Dave and I are basically able to creatively write the entire time. Hey, can you guys hear me? Because everyone's frozen. Yeah, yeah I, can I can hear you. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah. Dave I mean, and I are to... actually just posing like this. <laughs> that, that's awesome. It's, it's, it's really convincing. Yeah, so, you know, we get to do this full time. We really are full time creatives. And that's um, that means we can go a lot faster, you know. And I think we're both, or I mean, for me, the last, six months I've spent stripping everything that I could stripping. that wasn't fiction. Yeah, Fifty don't Shades of Sean Platt. Fifty Shades of Sean Platt, bitch. Look it up. Uh, <laughs> so, you, you didn't answer a question, though. <clears throat> okay, so do you guys want to answer first? Because I will ramble about this. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go me. ahead. S since Johnny only works on one book a year. <laughs> I, I, I do have an answer. I'll go after Dave. It's so seldom that Dave wants to do something. So I'm like, you do it, Dave. Go ahead. Good for you. I have nothing to say. Uh, I, I find it easier to stay within the world of one book uh, than edit and then get back into the other one. Uh, that's because usually we're working, you know, on a, a few different things at various stages. Uh, but I, I kind of prefer to keep everything together. If, if you don't have that option, then I would definitely, you know, space it out a little bit better but editing, <clears throat> I think editing helps me sometimes before writing. So if I have something I need to edit and I'm not like really gelled to, to write yet, I'll, I'll edit first and then sometimes the writing will flow a little easier. That's it. I, yeah, I've never run into this, but I'm, I'm about to. Just like I'm about to warm it up, Chris. I'm about to. Anybody catch the reference? Okay, so anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> silence. Um, okay, so basically I'm about to finish the uh, book one of my zombie, what I believe is going to be a trilogy. And I just got past a major roadblock today. By the way, that's, it's fucking hard. Like, writing is hard. Why do we do this? Because um, we like the pain. To figure some stuff out. We do like the pain. Fifty Shades of Sean Platt. And I, um, it, it, it's not so, harder than actually working. It's, it's not true. pouring it's not concrete. <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, I've had hard jobs. And this ain't it. So, so, so Sean and I are going to be working on a project on October 1st. We just talked about it again today, and it's going to be really awesome. 
And we sort of penciled and that out a confusing. while ago. confusing. <laughs> which is the best kind of awesome. And we, I, I, had, I put it on my calendar and then I went into Scrivener and set my project targets such that I would have it done before we started work on that. And I am sticking to it. So I am going to be done by the time that we're done doing that on, uh, on uh, October 1st. So that said, I'm going to have a rough draft of my current book and you're supposed to like kind of let it sit for a while. At least that's, I think we all kind of agree. And so if you do the math, like Sean and I are not going to be done probably by that time. So I'm planning on doing both at the same time because for me, mentally, those are very different activities. And edit, something I'm editing, I already am familiar with the world and I'm just sort of getting the meta picture and going back and I, as, I rewrite. I don't know about you guys. It's not like an edit. It's a rewrite. Yeah. And, but it's much, much easier. It's a different process than sort of forging new ground. So I plan to do those at the same time. Yeah, I, <laughs> I do more rewriting than anything else um, by, by far because they're, you know, I'll rewrite. Like I, I rewrite my own stuff. I rewrite Dave's stuff. Um, and I rewrite uh, Rachel's stuff and David Masters is the, the other writers I'm working with. And all of them, they, they, it's more like rewriting than editing. David write less than anyone else. But still, like, it, it is a line item edit. So it, it, but it takes a different part of my brain than actually writing. So I've never, ever been in a situation in the entire time I've been writing where I've only been working on one project. So that would kind of be really, really interesting. And I would love to do that. And um, I'm actually thinking about maybe next year taking a little block to write a very specific book where I, that's the only thing I work on. And I don't know, but, but I did find that, yes, I feel like I have to write every day. And I didn't come to that realization until um, it's really been probably in the last month. Um, or maybe I realized that you write the same story ago. every day. Do you have to say stay in the world of a given story every day to keep it? Um, yes, it's it's been an evolution. Now the way it's done, and this really didn't happen until my kids went back to school um, a few weeks ago, and I was able to adhere to a more specific schedule. But I'm writing in the mornings, and then I edit in the afternoons. And absolutely, I prefer to stay in the same world. So. The last 10 days, I've actually done almost no editing and I've only done writing. And I, I don't remember the last time I've gone that long writing. And that's been really, really fun. That's been pretty cool. Um, but, but, and so I haven't edited, I haven't sp split my day. I've written all day. But ideally, um, I like to write in the morning and edit. And I don't think you should have more than two worlds going on. I, I do, but I don't think that's best. But I think that always writing, and if you move on to another project that you're editing, for me personally, yes, I think you should go ahead and start writing something else if you have nothing else to write in that second project so that you're, you're – it's just momentum. I think juggling two worlds for a writer is reasonable. Yeah. So, Sean, when you when – you I know that you don't read much, but when you used to read a lot, did you ever read two books at the same time? I read like seven books at a time. Fiction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do that too, and I it feels like the same mental muscles because I'm to, I'm sort of taking the approach. See, this, I told you that I'm a student of this podcast as well as being on it. I was when Sean, when you talked about writing in ninety minute increments, that sort of jibes with me too because my it's almost like my fingers get sluggish. Yeah, that's been the best decision right. I've made all year is the ninety minute blocks. So what I'm trying to do is, and I can write two thousand words in ninety minutes pretty easily, more more like twenty five hundred, and so. I've been trying to do, the f number one priority is my current zombie novel, and then I'm writing that first thing in the morning, that's number one priority, and then if I have extra time, I'm devoting them to the new one that I've told you about, and then if I get a third block on a certain day, there's another thing that we've all, we've kind of discussed that I want to start too. Um, for me, it's not hard to switch between those worlds, but again, I don't have a ton of experience with that. Well, it, 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 is like, it is like reading many books at a time. I think it's exactly the same thing. You know, I used to, especially when I first had, when I first had my daughter, I had more time, um, you know, more time than when my son was born and when she got a little older. But when she was an infant, I went through this phase where, like, I would, she'd be sleeping. I just had minutes, you know, wherever. And, like, literally, I had books no matter where I'd be, whether it was the bathroom, the bedroom, work, the car. <laughs> I would just have books everywhere. And 
like there was a time I was probably juggling a dozen books, but I never had a problem leap, you know, falling right back into the world as soon as like I got on the page. And that's how writing is for me. It doesn't take, I don't have to fall into the world, but I do find that I've really enjoyed writing the same thing for a long stretch this last 10 days. It's been pretty cool. And, um, and, and I do find that you, you can, you, you can immerse yourself a little bit better. And I think, I think that's pretty awesome. So. Sean, how many words is that project in what period of time? You just have to say it, so I believe it. Um, it it's the, the rough draft of the book we have right now is 50,000 words in 10 days. In, in how long? Five days? 10 days. 10. Yeah. We just did okay. the 30,000 zombie story. Yeah, we did 30,000 on. And, and the, the, the other project that I'm working on, that 50,000 words came from a outline that Dave did that was 7,000 words. So that really accounts for the speed too because even if there's probably not a single sentence that went from that outline to the draft I have now, but it doesn't matter. Because oh, it's sure. Always, Shit all over it. <laughs> no, that's not the point. It's, it, it, they're story beats. So they're, they're hanging out below my copy. Just kidding. So I'm looking as I'm typing, I'm like, okay, this is what's going to happen next. And even if I totally ignore what's supposed to happen next, it still prompts me to think of something. So it's those, if that's the best thing about writing with a partner is you get somebody who can just kind of like coax you along because then you're not having to make something up constantly, you know? Yeah. yeah I'm here, looking forward to trying that with our project, Sean. Yeah. Now, now, no, the, the, the lady that asked us a question, I'm guessing she's writing alone and she's building these worlds herself. Now my assume. question, my question to you, Sean, is if I wasn't writing with you and you were plotting all of this out by yourself, could you still manage this many stories? Um, yeah, totally. I it couldn't. Just, yeah, it would just <laughs> I would be lost. It would be a different, it would be a different flow. I mean, th think about it. I mean, I have, th there's all the different writers I work with now. Are you saying if I didn't work with anybody and I was just totally independent? Yeah. And you were doing like three or four stories by yourself. Could you manage that many at once? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it, yeah because I, I could manage four if I had the time. My, my yeah, continuity would be. Enough. A disaster. Yeah, it's 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 a time thing that 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 is the hardest, and and that's what I that's another change I really made is right now if something gets sacrificed, it's the editing that gets sacrificed, not the writing, because I'd rather have a bank of clean writing to work with. So the way I organize it, I do it just like Johnny with blocks. So I have two non-negotiable blocks, which are in the morning. So basically before lunchtime. I, I make sure my writing gets done. There's only one day where I have a client call where I, I, there's no way out of it and I don't, I don't get that block. But ideally, I have two blocks of writing each day and then anything else I can fit in dirt after that is awesome. It's when I catch up on other stuff and edit and rewrite and polish. But um, it, it's really awesome when everything works out and I really get ahead. It sucks when... Like, for example, this podcast, because um, we do two of them back to back, it basically eats up two full blocks, which you don't recover those. So you really do want to be as protective of your writing time when you're a writer as possible and be as consistent as possible. You know, I mean, I would venture to say, Dave, you don't write at the same time every day, right? I'm not even awake at the same time every day. <laughs> I thought you were going right. to say you aren't even awake when you're writing. <laughs> Fair enough. Sometimes. <laughs> but it's like the but, psychic typewriter and Tommyknockers. I do have yeah, to be I, up a while, though. I can't wake up and go right into writing. I, I, oh, I write five minutes after I fast. wake up. I can't do yeah. that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. You, wait, which one are you, Johnny? Right. You wake right when you wake up? Like you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. My, my brain isn't working yet. <laughs> well, how long does yeah. it take you to warm up? Uh... And how much well, porn do you watch before it happens? <laughs> well, it takes me an hour just to like kind of get my entire mass out of bed. <laughs> and, and basically, okay, I wake up and the first thing I think is, oh fuck. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that, no lie. And, and, and then I get up. I go to the it's fridge. funny because it's true. I go to the fridge. I get like you know nine diet cokes or whatever. <laughs> and, and, and once I'm about my fifth one, I'm kind of awake. And <laughs> once you get to the fifth one, you're kind of awake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, that's spectacular. All right, so let's get to the main topic. I do have two more questions, but we'll save them for next time because we're 
we're already half an hour in. Yay! Oh man! Wow! All right. <laughs> okay. So the big news currently in the in the Amazon world, the KDP world, is that they. Well, why don't you guys? Why don't you guys tell this because you're the kings of of breakfast cereal, and uh, <laughs> you want to go, Dave? Yeah, Amazon. Um, last week when they announced their new line of Kindle Fire HD and uh, the new Kindle Paperwhite, they also announced uh, Amazon cereals, which is. Yum. Which John and I have been doing for the past, you know, since last summer. And we, we've been hoping like hell that they would do something like this and it would take off. And it looks like, you know, they're, they're finally, they're, their publishing arm is now making serials. Um, and, and the cool thing about it isn't just that, you know, more authors will be doing serials. It's the way the serials are bought. You buy one yes. book, <clears throat> and, and this is what we really want out of all of this, what we've been hoping they would do. Although it's not extended to us or indie writers yet. I imagine it will be at some point. I don't know. But basically, when you buy a serial on Amazon, you buy it once, and each book, my understanding of it anyway, would be like, you know, three or four episodes, 10 to 20,000 words each. You buy it once, whatever the price is, and then it automatically downloads when the author updates. So that, that to me is like sweet. Like a podcast. Yeah, it's it's really awesome because I mean when when I mean all the way back when we were first talking funnels last August maybe I mean Dave and I were very specific about look this is great and we can do this now but it's not um, it's not efficient if it, we've always said if yesterday's gone came out two years from now it would be an app not an ebook and this isn't an app but it it's it's exactly the same thing it's, it's not efficient. Automatic. It's not efficient for two reasons. One, it's not efficient because as writers, we don't want to sell a fifteen to twenty thousand word book for two ninety nine. We we'd rather have it for ninety nine cents if we could, but but at ninety nine cents we only make a thirty five percent royalty with Amazon. So that's not efficient for us to make money on. So we kind of we, we, we basically make our money on the full seasons. Uh, but it's also but not it efficient. Means we have to publish seven weeks before we make a dime. Right. Uh, but well, so the, the, here's well, hold on. One other thing. The other inefficient thing is for for readers, they're downloading six different books. And yeah. if you have if you have a tablet or if you have a Kindle, that 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 fills up quickly, and it can get kind of confusing, like looking for it. So it's far easier to have one book that you're doing. It's unwieldy, so, oh. but but think about all the other smaller things too. So like, um, just us getting stuff to market, you know less less that front matter one less cover like we could really spend our time and make just an awesome one cover that's just that represents the series for that season instead of doing it six times i mean that takes time from our writing it takes time from our production right. being able to do just one is way 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 smarter and maybe instead of spending an hour and i'm not saying dave only spends an hour i have no idea how long he spends so this isn't me bashing on dave at all but instead of spending an hour on a cover maybe he spends you know an hour six times that's six hours on covers maybe he spends three hours on one cover and just like you know blows it out of the water because and i'm not saying his covers don't blow it out of the water normally dave your covers are awesome johnny you had but, a question did, did, did dave uh, <laughs> did, did, did dave Spank you or something? It's please, mommy, don't hit me with the hand. Actually, he no, wants I me just, to spank. I don't want him, to be like shit nice. on Dave's show. Like, like you don't? that's the next one. That's a better off one, <laughs> dead one. That's <laughs> there are several. Oh, by the way, my favorite line from the last episode of Better Off Undead was, um, "Deliverance ruined sodomy for me. I'm no longer interested." <laughs> All right. So anyway, so here's my question. I, I have two questions. The first one is, Dave, you said this isn't available for indie authors yet. I didn't know that. I thought that that's available for everybody. So that's question one. Question two is, I my perception when I saw this, I men mentioned this to Sean earlier, is does this screw you guys up? Because right now, you're not the only game in town, but you're one, you might as well be the only game in town. You're one of the only few groups doing this as much as you are, and now there's going to be a lot of them, and it's, it's just, I don't know, I think that the niche has a lot okay. of power. So those two things. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'll let Dave go first, and I'll eat up whatever he doesn't. <laughs> I think uh, is it, it's usually the other way around. <laughs> I don't. I don't like sloppy seconds. 
<sighs> yeah, and I don't think we probably have like four foods in common too. <clears throat> no. I like good. You'll food. see that I have no, I have no problem with this being the bus on Dave show. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll join the train. I was just feeling a little bad there. I was like, fuck, give the guy a break. I hate you all. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, yeah, it's it's they they signed a few authors up um that that seem relatively new to serials. I'm not sure. I, I don't know too much about them. Um but they signed a few authors up that are, are doing this in different genres. Uh, not open to indie authors yet. I don't know if this is something that they'll extend to KDP Select. Maybe they're waiting to see how it'll work. I, I don't know. Or KDP, not KDP Select. Um, now, as far as are we worried about the competition, I mean, it's the same as any other books. No, we're not worried. Uh, the book is a book. I mean, we, we have, you know, we've written several stories and we've got our base of readers that, that like what we're doing and I don't expect that to change just because there's other serials. If anything, I think it might bring more people to the table. Yeah, I, I, I think this it's is... It's like you got in and you had exclusive dominion to a, to an extent. And now you it's like, oh, well, everybody else Yeah, but exclusive that out, dominion... Okay, okay, here's the, here's the analogy. Well, we were, actually at a, we were actually at a disadvantage in a lot of ways. Now I because think we might... Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so there's there's this there's this shopping center. Okay, and they've got some good stores, some bad stores, whatever. But they're not they're not really. I don't know. It's not that busy. And a restaurant goes. In. It's a great restaurant. It's an Italian restaurant. Food's awesome. They got pasta pomodoro. That's just fucking good. All right. Awesome restaurant. But no one goes there. It's the only restaurant. No one wants to go to the restaurant because like the mall's not busy. It's just, it's just, it's a hassle. It's out there. But then a Chinese restaurant opens up and then a Mexican restaurant opens up and pretty soon you have this really great restaurant belt and people go, you want to go eat? Let's go over there because there's, there's always something to eat there. And by us having the only cereal, we were the only game in town. Now it's like, man, I love reading this way because how many of our readers, Dave, are serial readers for the first time and love the format? So a lot, a lot new people are coming to the format and that's good for us, not only because we've been doing it for a year and we have six series to lead on, but we know how to do it. We know how to produce. We know, you know, I mean, we, we flirted a lot with the production model, me a lot more than Dave. I don't think he's quite as in love with it as I am. I do. I love, and, and that's what this, this company, Plimpton, is doing. It's this production model where they're working with other writers and building it. And I really believe in that because I think you can build infinite worlds, but you can only write so much. And, um, and, and Dave's an exceptional world builder. You know, I've told him if he wanted to do more, like, let's do more. <laughs> he's like, you're killing me, man. Stop it. I wake up and I say, fuck, it's a new day. <laughs> I wake up and say, fuck, it's another day. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it's a really, really good thing for, um, for, for us and for authors in general and for the format. And what, what was your first question? Not about the competition, but what was the first question? Oh, indie authors. Um, yeah, I think that they're just piloting this. I think they're taking it. So, so how is this working? Like, is there, there's an Amazon imprint and they're just seeking people out and saying, you, let's do one? Yeah, right now it's invite only. What you can do is there's a submission page and you can go to the submission page and um, you, I think it's two episodes at 10,000 words each that you can submit. Um, and uh, Dave, actually, do you want to talk about this at all, Dave? Kind of some of the conversations we had about that? Whether to submit or hold our yeah. stuff or not? Yeah. Nah, I don't know. I, I, I want to get back real quick, though. Uh, when we, we started doing serials, we were at a, a disadvantage because a lot of people, when we first started, said serials will not work. I mean, there are people shitting all over it. When I was, yeah. when I was thinking about doing it, I, I like to investigate what I'm going to do before I do it. And I didn't see many people doing it. Nobody doing it the way we were doing it, exactly the way we were doing it. And almost everybody seemed to be like negative on it, like, oh, this won't work. So I was kind of scared when we did it. And the fact that it did work, I was thrilled about. So we are at a disadvantage. If serials become more accepted, then that kind of does some of our marketing for us. We don't have it to convince as many people. a lot of our marketing for us, a lot. <clears throat> I mean, and, and I don't know. I, I, I don't know if that gets back into, you know, talking about what we're not going to talk about. But I think that using, even if, oh, that was your other question. Does that ruin it for you, Johnny? Do you mean just as in an exposure level or do you mean like an actual people coming and buying your product because now are they going to buy a season if they could only, if it's serialized and auto-updated over here? Because I think that's a pretty legitimate question. Um, 
you know, if they're Wait, getting what, auto updates the... here and they have to download all of your stuff individually because you're not part of their program, it's like you have serials, but not really, even though you've been doing it for a year. Okay, okay. The, the it's sort of like, it's sort of like you had a need and you built a really elaborate and complicated machine, and it took you <laughs> d days and d so okay. So before email marketing uh, services like Aweber were right. popular. I hand built one that would literally go through a list of emails in a dot database and send one and then it would send the next and then it would send the next and then you sort of realize oh like everybody else can get in they don't have to build all this shit it's almost an issue of did all of your all of your effort I, but I mean I guess that's spilled milk if it's it spilled I, no, well, it's spilled. I, I will say one thing that, that there is one drawback I saw to this if if the Kindle serials take off and we're not part of it or they don't extend it out to indie authors, we are at a disadvantage in one way because Kindle serials automatically update. So if somebody buys our stuff knowing it's a serial but not a proper Kindle serial, yeah. they might be waiting for an update that's not going to come. They won't realize they have to go buy another book or they might be inconvenienced to buy another book. So that that could be a negative if if this thing takes off. Yeah, I could see that. I could well, see that erupting in the um in the in the reviews too. Like well, one star, in, in, no auto update. Yeah, did, didn't auto update. So, it, well, here's yeah, the other thing. People too. don't understand. People, th a lot of people wrote us this weekend saying, "Oh, you guys are going to be in this? Are you doing this? Uh, I can't wait till it's auto update." They're already expecting, you know, that this is just something that we can do. They yeah, and realize. you can't control consumer thought. Like you can't. And they're gonna like, okay, uh, um, episode fifteen, Dave. We've got that one star review. I love this series! Exclamation point. But it's not available in my region. One star. <laughs> Come on, really? And they had to have gotten it by now, and they still haven't fixed that one star. Sure. So that just kind of sucks, you know? It's like, but yeah. So that bums but, us but out. What if you what What if you have built a better mousetrap too? Like, what if your serialization model is better in some ways? Now there's this other. It's kind of like uh, in in school when you get an open book test, and then the bar was raised. It's like, okay, well, now that it's open book, even though you maybe knew the material. Suddenly, there's this new level. So, well, if there's auto update question. official serials, it's almost like you can't use your way of doing it because this standard has been established. Yeah, and I'm 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 okay with that because I think that our model needed to evolve anyway. Like I I mean honestly, I thought what we're doing is even though it was kind of cutting edge and no one else was doing it, I felt like it was outdated from day one because you could just see where it was going. And even though it was newer than anything else, it was it had a limited life. So I'm really like energized and excited to see that the evolution is happening. And I that's when I th I love Amazon for that reason because they always bring things home a little bit sooner than I expected. When I first went online, I expected all of that happened with Kindle and all of all everything that happened. I expected it to happen, but I didn't expect it to happen until. But next year, at the earliest, and their Kindle explosion happened a full three years earlier, I also didn't expect it to come from Amazon. I expected it to come from Apple, and it didn't. Amazon did it. Amazon did it, and they did it right. They did it well. They really brought the eBooks into a place where anyone could play the game, and they did it faster, and they evolved this model faster than I expected. And I they're doing it better than anyone. Yeah, they are, and I, I, I'm very appreciative of, of Amazon because... They've they've given us all a a chance, and that's why we do get a lot of pushback from um, you know, not a lot, but but a reasonable amount from people who are looking for our stuff on other platforms. But our sales are so low on other platforms compared to Amazon that, and the exclusivity that we get with being able to, um, you know, here, you know what, I'm going to do this live. Do you want to do this? I will say I tried to search for one of our books on another platform that will go unnamed, and it was like trying to find a needle in your hair <laughs> yeah and and who wants to do that you know like it, it's it's just it's i don't know so, everything else is so counterintuitive everything else other than amazon at this moment that i've seen anyway is counterintuitive including barnes and noble dave i'm not saying anything <laughs> <laughs> we which is I, sean yeah, and i barnes sean and, and i got an email that was titled my barnes and noble rant and it was it was like several pages long. You know what? That should be in the show notes. 
<laughs> it's Copy like he paste, wants. Actually. It's like it, you you get the feeling that because it didn't have a huge amount of relevance to us, it kind of did. So I get the impression that it's good that Dave has us to email. Otherwise, he'd just be yelling at a wall. <laughs> I'd be sending it to Barnes and Noble corporate and getting cease you know, and desist letters. You know what's funny is I'll have Dave and he'll be. I couldn't fucking write today. I've been, blah, blah, blah. I'm a slow writer, and I'll get a thirty-two thousand word rant, and I'm like, this is a week's worth of writing. Like, That's do you a not count? Kind. No, but it's not. That's the whole point. There are times oh, I, if I write rants, I can write three books a week. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like, like you can. There are t- now. Not all fiction is going to be that fluid, but you can train yourself to write fiction as fast as you write an email. Well, see, rants now, come minute. from a Did place Chuck of Paul hate. Chuck is a guest writer for his novel Rant. <laughs> <laughs> see, rants come from a place of hate, and I can tap into that so much easier than the the love and creation that goes into our fiction. Oh, well, I'm gonna sa- sample that one. <laughs> I can comes from a place of hate, and I can tap into that easy. <laughs> so, what were you doing here live, Sean? Oh, uh, hold on. Um, okay, so right now we put um, we put season three of Yesterday's Gone out for two days. So by the time you guys hear this, it'll actually, be too late. It'll be too late. It's today. And so why tomorrow tell people? And it's Tuesday. Well, right now we're posted. We're at number 285 in all free Kindle. Um, that's pretty cool. There's a good chance we'll hit maybe top 100. And if we do, that's going to do great things for us because it'll push people. This is the full season three. So we're giving away $6 worth of book, but we also have $12 worth of book that comes before that. And episode one and two is free. So really, there's just zero risk here. They can download the third season and go download episodes one and two to see if they like it. And then, you know, move into the series. So that power that Kindle gives us to help market our product is just unsurpassed. Barnes & Noble does not have an equivalent like that. And not only do they not have an equivalent like that, I think they have a few really, like, sorry, dumbass, stupid shit crap things that they do <laughs> like well there are a bunch of sorry dumbass shit crap people like anonymous there. reviews i think anonymous reviews are bullshit when you can just like click on one star but not leave a reason why it's it's it it it, it just it fuels the whole like i am an evil fuck cuz i'm anonymous <laughs> on the internet thing that <laughs> like and I know Johnny wants to do this whole um, segment on haters. Like we should probably do yeah, that we'll next do week. That next week. <laughs> but but it's true. It's like people. It, it gives haters just a really easy place to hate. And I don't. I love Amazon system because you have to have an account. You know, and I guess you have to have an account at Barnes and Noble too. But people will still hate at Amazon. Don't 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 think that for a moment. Then oh, people <laughs> totally hate. No, <laughs> I. I'm not blind. I've seen the hate we've got on Amazon too. <laughs> but I just think that the, the anonymity of being able to click a yeah. one star makes people meaner. That's the all. mentality is different too. I mean, I talked about that when we talked about Goodreads. Yes. Because you yes. go click. It's just it's a different mental flow. Oh, yes. yeah, I'll click that. I totally agree. And so that's, you know, that's, 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 that's hard because I seriously, I will never mind a low review with a reason why. Even if I disagree with it, even if the reason is, you know, because um, because you the language is terrible, you know, I don't, I, it doesn't bother me. If if it was because I had a big nose, that wouldn't bother me. At least it's a reason. But this one book anonymous was fantastic, star, but I got a parking ticket today, so one star. <laughs> <laughs> I, at least that's a reason. I understand that. I can hang my hat on that. Just the anonymous. Hang your hat star, on your nose. Because you know, if, <laughs> but I mean. <laughs> Like because we'll you know our average at a place like um, our average at Amazon is like four point seven out of five, and I think that's awesome. Maybe it's a little inflated because Goodreads is like four point two, and that's probably more realistic. You know, those people are hardcore readers, and um, they're probably less inclined to like pulpy, trashy fiction, and that's fine. But then you go to Barnes and Noble and it's like 0. 0.8. I'm making that up. I have no idea what it is. But it's actually big, pretty decent last time it, I looked. Is it okay? For for a while there, see, I stopped looking for a while there. It was pretty dismal, and I was just like, you know what? Your anonymous review thing sucks because there can't be this big a disparity. Like it's just, it's not, and and it's not even. 
Okay, here's my other problem with it. It's not like there were 30 reviews and some of them were one stars. It was like there was five reviews and four of them were one star. And I'm like, really? Because my book doesn't suck that bad. <laughs> what was the subject today? <laughs> well, okay, so I was actually going to go back to that. I was going to go back to that. So we've got plenty to say about Heroes next week. So the question I was going to ask is, is it, I mean, do you know anything about this? Is it more like a traditional publishing deal if you get invited into the serial program? Like, what are royalties? What's the arrangement? Do you know I have idea. no idea. But right now, it is, um, I believe it is coming from their actual publishing imprint, and it is invite only. And um, I, I am only theorizing here, but I believe that it will go just like KDP. You know, it's, it's, it will be a tool that they give their authors. So... You know, like you enroll into select. You can enroll into this. Maybe six but, months but from it, now, maybe a year from now. I don't know. But if if somebody wanted to to get in with you guys on one of your properties, do you have? I mean, how would that happen? Do you think would it be like they give you an advance, like a traditional deal? I'm talking about now, like before it's open. Uh, so you're saying like if Amazon saw yesterday's gone and like what? How would they bring that into the program? Uh, no idea. What would what would what would happen, and what would the deal for you guys be? I mean, would they be buying it from you? Um, I, yeah, if it's a if it's an um, if it's an imprint, then they would want a a property, so they would own copyright. So that would just leave us to decide, you know, what system is better, their system or our system. And I think that if it's their system. You get a lot of buy-in. I'm, for me, I mean, uh, Dave and I clearly would have to have a very long talk once we had our imaginary talk with Amazon. And a very uncomfortable talk, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, I, I don't know. I'd almost want to do something new or something unreleased rather than something that we already did. Or if it's something we already did in just one of our properties, because I think it would push a lot of attention to our other properties. Because that's what you're getting with Amazon is mass promotion. You're part of their engine, and I imagine that whatever sacrifice you're making in royalties, you're making up in additional sales and exposure, which you know can shine on your. Yeah, other I, I think that's what Johnny was asking. I'm just yeah, I'm trying to get a feel for the money, but uh, I think you're saying you don't know. I don't know, but um, that would be the first question we ask. Come on, yeah, it's certainly <laughs> it's certainly a conversation I'd love to have. I mean, for us, yesterday's gone is a, is a is a tough one because it's obviously the most attractive for someone to buy, but it's also our most developed and it's the most worth hanging on to. I mean, we do we it's it's it is our cash cow right now. We're going into our fourth season. Um, it's established, you know. Um, which makes it more of an attractive purchase, but also makes it something like it, it is a legitimate asset. It's not like for something like that, we need somebody to come and help us where like a title like for Nevermore would be a great fit, I think for Amazon because it's outside of what we're doing. It's outside of our funnel, um, but it's, it's YA. They would know how to market that in a way that we wouldn't be able to tap into effectively because it's outside of everything else we're doing. If they wanted to buy something like that and make it a part of their serials thing, it fits with what they're doing and it fits with us not doing it and handing that over. So that would be a really great win-win, I think, for all of us, Amazon, if you're listening. <laughs> so as a, as a, as a wrap-up wrap thing, to wrap up this topic, and then, and then we, should, we should wrap it up. I'll say wrap up a few more times. Yeah, at is, least three. Ribbity, ribbity, wrap, wrap. Do you think this is just a keep your eyes open for the audience of this podcast? Because most of us aren't traditionally published authors with a lot of cred, and you said it's not currently available to indie authors. So what's the big message here for the, the indie at this point? Uh, my big takeaway on this is write serials because they've legitimized the format. So don't write serials. If you, don't, if you weren't considering writing a serial 10 days ago, don't start now. That's stupid. <laughs> just don't. But if you were like, yeah, I think serial sounds really cool. I like the idea, but I'm not really sure. It, they, have, they, they have ratified the idea. It's a good idea. It's only going to get bigger. Um, I, I, I also think that the peop, there's a distinction between the kind of serials that we write and the serials that some other people write, which are basically just a book. We're, yeah, we're yeah, I was going to ask about that. Theories. I was going to ask about that, Dave. It's not Dickensian serialization you're doing. No, no, no. We, we, have, we have changed. I think one of the most important things that, that Dave and I did when we launched Yesterday's Gone was change the language from books 
to episodes and seasons. I think that that immediately gave the reader a shortcut to understand what kind of world we were doing. And there's a few, like we'll get a very small percentage of reviews that are like, I don't like the format, I don't understand, There's it just ends. But an overwhelming majority of our reviews are like, I never thought to read a book like this before, it's totally different, I, I love it. And so those are our readers. We're, we don't, we're not trying to cater to the other ones. We're writing for the ones who get what we're doing, and it really is modeled more after the way television handles their, their serials than books. We're not breaking a book apart, and that was the mistake we made with Available Darkness um, when we tried to serialize it on, on our blog. You know, a few years ago, like we, we, the first time we did serialization and I, I love the fact that we've been doing serialization as long as we have, because it's really legitimate. Like we're not jumping on any train. Like that's not, we've done it for a year and we did it for a couple of years before that. But the mistake that we made until yesterday's gone was breaking a novel into pieces. Yes, that's exciting, but it's also a little old hat and consumers get this new model because it's the way they've been watching TV for 10 years. And Who is it? it? <laughs> All right. So on Dave's phone call, I think we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up every time. I think the rule is that when Dave's phone rings, it may or may not be an incident where the, uh, the internet will c c crash because he accidentally, <laughs> oh, the whole internet. <laughs> so, so we'll, we'll wrap it up on this. We're going to talk about it. I believe haters next week and I'll get to those remaining voicemails. Um, as my final plug, I would like to uh, say my manifesto that I've been promising is indeed out. Howtobelegendary.com. Check it out. What do you guys have going on? It's awesome. Get it. Um, we have a, a short story collection, uh, Dark Crossings 2, with six really awesome stories. Um, you should totally get that. Um, and our zombie story, actually, get our zombie story. It's Z2134, uh, and it's it's really, really awesome. It's a little long. It's like 30,000 words, so it's longer than our normal serials, but super awesome. Yeah, you may need to send that to me. I'm, I may want to check that out. Yeah. All right, and uh, as far as the podcast is concerned, we've gotten a lot of new reviews and ratings. I love it. Thank you all. That's very awesome. If you have a chance to uh, do that more, that would be great. And um, if you have any questions, go to selfpublishingpodcast.com, and um, there's a big button right there. You can send us voicemail and stuff and ask questions and feedback, and that's great. So with that, we'll wrap it up, and I will. we will, we, not just me, we'll see you all next time. Adios. Thank you.